Caveman is a 1981 comedy set in prehistoric times where primitive humans interact with dinosaurs and learn how to walk upright, cook with fire, invent music, take drugs, and murder. What do you mean, murder? Well, saying murder may be a bit harsh, but this film contains a lot of bloodless violence that sometimes exceeds the normal cartoonishness to be expected from a slapstick comedy. The film's protagonist, Atuk, is played by former Beatle Ringo Starr in pretty much his only notable lead role in a movie where he wasn't playing some version of himself. Atuk is obsessed with the busty Lana, played by Starr's eventual real-life wife, Barbara Bach, whom he met during production. She, however, is the mate of the brutish Tonda, played by sloth from the Goonies, John Matuzak. Atuk spends much of the film trying to get with Lana, only for Tonda to chase him away. It's a lot like Olive Oil being married to Bluto, with Popeye being the one not taking no for an answer. Atuk's sidekick Lar is played by Dennis Quaid, so it's unfortunate Caveman was filmed in the early 1980s, because had the producers waited a couple of decades, they could have saved a lot of money in makeup and costuming by simply following Quaid's real-life brother around with an iPhone. Others in the cast include Shelley Long from Cheers as Tala, a cavewoman in love with a toque, Jack Guilford as the blind Gog, Carl Lumley as Bork, Evan Kim from A Fistful of Yen as Nuke, Cork Hubbard as Ta, Avery Schreiber as Ock, and Night Court's Bull, Richard Mull, as the abominable snowman. The film was directed and co-written by Carl Gottlieb, one of the writers of Jaws. Caveman's other writer was Rudy DeLuca, a frequent Mel Brooks collaborator. Watching this film, it becomes obvious that one of the writers was a frequent Mel Brooks collaborator. Caveman had a budget of close to $5 million, but featured the special effects of a movie with half that, as evidenced by how it looks slightly worse than Roger Corman's Galaxy of Terror, which came out that same year and cost just $2 million to produce. You'd be tempted to think that the money was spent to get a Beatle to play the lead role, but to be fair, that Beatle was Ringo. Don't get me wrong, I love Ringo, but he's still, you know, Ringo. Ordinarily, I refrain from discussing music in my videos because playing a movie or television theme song on YouTube is like saying Candyman in a mirror only you summon something a lot worse than a demon. Much of the score in Caveman is filled with boring stock sound like the William Tell Overture and the Colonel Bogey March, or knockoff versions of the signature tune from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yet this film's opening music, written by Lalo Schifrin, best known for the Mission Impossible theme, is so memorable that it deserves a place alongside anything created by John Williams, James Horner, or Danny Elfman. Another aspect of Caveman is, apart from one scene, all the dialogue is comprised of a fictional primitive human dialect. But to the credit of the filmmakers, it's still easy to follow along. Examples include Ool for food, Macha for monster, Puka for broken, Kaka for crap, Alunda for love, and Zug Zug for sex. I still prefer Snoo Snoo. The film begins with a group of cavemen foraging for food. Superimposed text places the time at one zillion BC and follows up with a joke almost as old as that. We meet the protagonist, Atuk, meekly interacting with the other cavemen and being threatened by Tonda, the tribe's leader establishing their dynamic for essentially the entire film. Atuk's search for food is interrupted as he's confronted by the first of Caveman's adorable stop-motion dinosaurs. Masha! 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 Screaming, he leads the beast directly to the rest of his tribe, 
which results in his best friend Lar getting his leg broken and another caveman getting eaten. Ladies and gentlemen, the film's hero. After the attack, the tribe abandons the injured Lar and head back to their cave. Even Atuk agrees to leave his best friend behind. Ladies and gentlemen, the film's hero. Back at their cave, Tonda is greeted by his mate, the sexy Lana. While the rest of the tribe settles down to a hungry night, an infatuated Atuk sneaks a fruit to Lana, which she immediately gives to Tonda. The next day, the tribe discovers a prehistoric cannabis plant. Atuk is made to test the berries to see if they're safe to eat, and he passes out. But not before he secretly hides some of them in his pocket. As the tribe gets ready for sleep, Atuk stares at Lana and gets an idea while holding the drug berries. <coughs> what are you doing, Ringo? 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 Oh God, no, Ringo! No, Ringo! Was Bill Cosby an uncredited writer for the script? Ladies and gentlemen, the film's hero! The next morning, a justifiably angry Tonda kicks Atuk the hell out of the tribe. Now banished himself, Atuk is happy to run into his friend Lar. In this case, it's a literal run-in, the impact of which straightens their stooped backs. And somehow fixes Lar's broken leg. Atuk and Lar soon find a pretty cave girl, Tala, trying to lead the blind Gog through a series of mud pits. Gog falls into one, and even though Lar is the one to rescue him, for some reason Tala has eyes only for Atuk. Lar! Tala! Gog! Gog! Gog Puka! I love how Shelley Long delivered that line, explaining Gog's blindness. It's the perfect deadpan attitude of an exhausted adult child stuck as the caregiver of an aging and infirm parent. No, Mom, I'm not talking about you. After washing up at a nearby river, Gog angers a dinosaur in a scene that Steven Spielberg didn't have the guts to include in Jurassic Park. Atuk fights it off with a large pointed stick, which inspires him to deal with Tonda the same way. Tonda. Atuk. Matcha! Atuk. Huh? Tonda! Tonda! Oh. What? Oh. Until he chickens out at the last minute. Atuk Matcha. Atuk Tonda. Ooh. Yeah. This forces Atuk to come up with a backup plan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the film's hero. Since Tala is not a matcha, she helps Lana escape. Atuk's new tribe, bolstered by the addition of a random family, takes shelter in a tree during a thunderstorm, which gets struck by lightning, leading to the discovery of fire. They're then approached by yet another group of outcasts, and the obligatory 1980s gay joke. To be fair, the gay couple is immediately accepted into the tribe, thus showing that unwashed prehistoric cavemen who speak in grunts and monosyllables are still much more civilized than Rick Santorum. 
A struggle over food leads to the discovery of cooking, followed by an impromptu concert when the cavemen accidentally discover music. Remember when I said one of the writers worked a lot with Mel Brooks? <laughs> The following morning, Atuk is again chased by Dinosaur, which he again leads directly to his fellow cavemen. Macha! 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 Ladies and gentlemen, the film's hero. Afterward, Atuk and the rest of the men search for food and come across a gigantic egg. Unfortunately, it's stolen from them by Tonda's tribe, who lose it by dropping it off a cliff. The egg lands in a geyser and gets poached, delighting Atuk and his hungry tribe. And since it wasn't being cooked in the kitchen of a Chili's restaurant, the egg is just slightly safer to eat. Upon returning to camp, they successfully repel an attack by Tonda's group, but not before some of their fire is stolen. Remember when I said one of the writers worked a lot with Mel Brooks? <laughs> this is actually the second fart joke in Caveman, but the first one occurred earlier in the film during a moment when it was easy to miss considering what else was going on. <laughs> on the way to recapture their stolen fire, Atuk defends Tala by drugging an attacking dinosaur. Presumably, he doesn't attempt to have sex with it because Tala is watching. Finding Tonda's cave empty, the raiding party steals back their fire and what food they can. On their way home, they encounter Tonda's tribe fishing just before Lana is washed away by the river. Atuk and Lar save her, but Lar falls back into the water with a dive so fake it would put a Chilean soccer player to shame. Instead of searching for his friend, Atuk returns to camp with Lana. Ladies, gentlemen, film hero. Lar, meanwhile, washes up in what the film says is a nearby Ice Age. An Ice Age isn't a place. That's like saying a light year is a measurement of time. I'm starting to think the writers of this film that feature human beings living with dinosaurs didn't double check their science. Atuk tries pitching Alunda at Lana, but the rest of his tribe rightfully shame him over abandoning Lar. While the men leave to search for their missing tribesmen, a jealous Tala goes to tell Tonda where he can find Lana. The search party tracks Lar to the ice cave, where they find him frozen along with an abominable snowman, which they accidentally defrost before escaping. For some reason, Tala is surprised that Tonda and his men, who already attacked her group once, kidnap all the women instead of just reclaiming Lana. After a montage, a montage. of them preparing weapons and armor, Atuk's tribe attacks Tonda and his men in a surprisingly brutal manner for what has been so far a slapstick comedy. Sure, there's no blood, but look at the way those cavemen are being beaten. Riding a captured dinosaur, Atuk charges at Tonda but is quickly dismounted. In a literal David and Goliath moment, Atuk uses a sling to defeat the massive caveman to win the day. After the battle, Atuk claims Tonda's mate as his prize, much to the disappointment of Tala. She watches, heartbroken, only for Atuk to drop the fickle Lana into a pile of dinosaur caca. Atuk and Tala embrace before claiming Tonda's cave, and the film tells us they lived happily ever after. I'm assuming until Tonda wakes up and beats the caca out of Atuk. Upon release, Caveman wasn't exactly a massive success, but it more than made back its budget at the box office. It can't be said that it became popular on home video either, like some cult favorites, because Caveman never really became a cult film. 
Critics, too, were less than kind, even modern ones wearing rose-tinted glasses of nostalgia. Many of them criticized Ringo's acting or that the other actors were boring or underused. However, most did give credit to the stop-motion dinosaurs, which were generally considered the highlight of this film. Portraying attempted rape and abduction as comedic acts by the hero never ages well. Neither does much of the slapstick, with characters falling over, farting fire, or landing in huge piles of dinosaur crap. But what really surprised me upon rewatching Caveman for the first time as an adult is just how much better of a leader the ostensible villain Tonda was compared to the hero Atuk. When Tonda abandoned Lar at the start of the film, he made a tough but good decision for his tribe because feeding and sheltering an injured member, particularly during what appears to be a shortage of food, would only be a burden on the rest of them. He was careful to let just the weakest of his tribe try any untested food to make sure it was safe for everyone else, and even let his men bring the unconscious Atuk back to the cave instead of leaving him for dead. Tonda was quick to react to danger and protected the women in his tribe from a sexual predator. He was a good hunter working to keep his tribe fed, even managing to resolve a dispute between its members. After Tonda saw Atuk's tribe with fire and walking erect, he stole the fire for his own people and fixed their spines, which would presumably make them better hunter-gatherers. Atuk, meanwhile, was a selfish piece of caca. He led a man-eating dinosaur to his fellow tribesmen, not once, but twice. He secretly hoarded food. He abandoned his best friend with a broken leg that he caused. He smashed a giant insect on that same friend's face. He put that same friend in danger by having him help with a kidnapping attempt in enemy territory. He even abandoned that same friend a second time to chase after the woman he lusted over. Lar, the sidekick, made a much better hero than Atuk. He not only bravely fought the dinosaur at the start of the film, but he was also quick to enter the mud pit to save Gog. He dived into a river to save a member of a hostile tribe, and when Tonda kidnapped their women, Lar was also the first one to take up arms to rescue them. The film even tried establishing Lana as a minor villain by making her out as nothing but a selfish woman taking advantage of her sex appeal to be pampered by those around her. But was she really that bad? When given food by a toque, she shared it with her actual mate. She never let a toque on and clearly told him that she was with Tonda. She willingly participated in her tribe's unique method of fishing like all the rest of the women. Even when she briefly returned a toque's feelings, it was only after the trauma of almost drowning and possibly in her mind being abandoned by her mate who seemingly left her for dead. They even gave her a moment near the end of the film where she kicked a toque during his fight with Tonda. But do you blame her after how he treated her for practically the entire movie? Atuk kept pestering her for sex even when she said she wasn't interested. He took advantage of her hunger by giving her food, trying to get laid. He drugged her to try to have sex with her unconscious body. After failing to kill her mate, he tried to kidnap her. Even though he helped save her from drowning, instead of returning her to her comfortable home, he took her back to his shoddy camp to put the moves on her. A toque was history's first incel. It really does seem to be a common trait with a lot of early 1980s comedies for the audience to be expected to root for awful people. Awful people. I can't really recommend Caveman, even if you could find it on DVD or Blu-ray. Though it is available for purchase on streaming services, you should only get it if there's a massive discount involved. In the words of a lot of critics at the time, I did not alunda this caca movie, and the puka filmmakers should just go zug zug themselves. Well, that's it. I wonder what time it is. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. There's more content on my channel, including other films that didn't age well, and a whole bunch of Scooby-Doo related stuff.